This is the neighborhood of Oakwood Village, located over here in Toronto. Making up the northern border of the neighborhood over here is the major street of Eglinton Avenue West, which has the eclectic strip of Little Jamaica along it. Known for its authentic cuisine and lively diversity, among other things, Little Jamaica is a wonderfully diverse, energetic enclave which has been an exquisite place to venture through and get a bite to eat from ethnic shops and restaurants. Serving some of the best Caribbean food in the whole city. This community emerged as the type of enclave that it resembles today in and around the 1950s when the predominantly black owned businesses begin setting up shop. Though it has roots dating back to long before then, when black communities flocked north trying to avoid slavery, many ending up in this area. Just south of the street, just off Oakwood Avenue, is the notable Reggae Lane, which, officially named in 2015, is the location of this charismatic lively and intricate mural, which indicates the ambient and colorful Jamaican culture, as well as, well, the ever-present reggae music and culture that has found a home here. Painted prominent figures such as Hali Selassie, the Lion of Judah, and Bob Marley, who, as a matter of fact, visited this enclave numerous times, all range along the vibrant mural. Marley was by no means alone in visiting either. Other musicians, like Jimmy Cliff, also made this strip a regular stopping place. This is certainly one of the larger Jamaican and Caribbean communities in the country, and has been for a while now, with the bulk of recent migration here surfacing from between the 70s and 80s. This area boasts having strong connections to groups such as the Cougars and the Scatolites, the latter being heavily connected to the legendary Jackie Matu. These are just a few examples of the vibrant, distinguished music culture that has found a place in Little Jamaica and tied right into the community for a while now. In the process, making the area one of the most prominent places in the entire world for producing reggae music. It's not just food and music that take up the space here, however. There are also many traditionally vibrant barbers and salons, as well as clothing stores which occupy the strip. And, like the restaurants, have been places where the locals would hang with one another and feel a sense of home and community. However, notoriously long-going construction for the Eglinton LRT transit line, which has been a catastrophe for the community and closed more than 140 businesses, along with, as of now, two years of on and off lockdowns, means that little Jamaica is suffering. Walk by now and you'll notice that it's not the entirely vibrant, tight-knit community that it once was. It's now far more fragmented, with juxtaposed, busy and noisy construction often consuming Eglinton, and a good chunk of once authentic, built-with-sweat-and-tear shops now vacant, posing a sad sight. Eventually, days of detrimental lockdowns will be over, hopefully, and the Eglinton Crosstown LRT construction will subside, making the area more convenient and easy to get to than ever before, with stations at both Oakwood Avenue and Dufferin Street, among others, connecting Little Jamaica to the rest of the city more sufficiently. What will be left of the community by the time the area reaps those rewards, however, is the question. 
Many of the resilient businesses, which survived more than 10 years now of construction, and, although not uniquely, also lockdowns more recently, will likely succumb to rising rent prices as the sweeping tide of gentrification rolls into this formerly affordable area. Overall, this community faces an uncertain future. If nothing's done, there's a good chance that many of the remaining businesses will likely get left behind, while the rich history and culture located here makes way most likely for shiny developments. And one of the largest reggae recording areas, at least in its quintessential form, will become a memory. The bulk of what made it such displaced. Oakwood Avenue, the neighborhood's namesake, sits just off Eglinton Avenue West and runs south through the neighborhood where it contains an eclectic range of places along it. Varying from businesses and corner stores and many older modest homes and apartments to places like this and some more fixed up and or larger, more expensive arrangements. This is perhaps especially prevalent as you get farther south towards St. Clair Avenue West. This street has steadily been gentrifying, hence the homes that look like this instead of this, and developments such as this along Oakwood Avenue. This more upscale gentrification trend is also taking place along the quieter residential streets to the east, where living arrangements such as this are starting to take shape in place of older homes on increasingly sought-after land. The further east you go in the neighborhood, towards the city core, and more directly towards Cedarvale Park, the higher end it generally gets, with more fancy larger homes sitting along the nice tree-lined residential streets. This is true to the fullest extent around places such as Dundurn Crescent, where beautiful vegetation and gardens lie in the fronts of perched, well-to-do homes. Some homes also look like this and this as well to the west, although not to quite as large a degree on the whole. A road just west of Oakwood Avenue that I found kind of neat is O'Leary Avenue, which features cute homes lying just across from garages. The aforementioned St. Clair Avenue West makes up the neighborhood's southern border, and along with Eglinton is the second commercial district along the neighborhood's boundaries. With nicely compact Colorful storefronts overlooking the streetcar lined Vibrant Avenue. This is the location of clothing and jewelry stores, as well as local bakeries and eclectic restaurants with outside seating in the warm months. This is where the livable, family friendly strip that occupies much of St. Clair is at its prime, with green trees along the sidewalk, a pretty sight as pedestrians walk by. A significant Italian and Southern European population resides in the area. This is reflected in many of the shops along St. Clair. This is also especially true as you get farther west along the road, closer to Dufferin Street, right in and around the vibrant community of Corso Italia, which is an eclectic area worth discussing. But that will be a separate video of its own. Dufferin Street makes up the neighborhood's western border and is a major, prominent thoroughfare. The street is predominantly made up of unspectacular, older homes. In the northern portion of Oakwood Village, along Dufferin, is the Fairbank Memorial Park, which, although involved in a scandal years back, is now a piece of sprawling green space with trees flanking it on the edges and a playground on its eastern portion. Over here, there's also the Fairbank Memorial Community 
Recreation Center facing Dufferin. Vaughn Road's northwestern edge lies right around the Dufferin and Eglinton intersection. I say northwestern edge because the street rather unconventionally stretches diagonally southeast from there, where it contains a fairly large mix of places, consisting of many apartments and a few buildings, as well as both duplexes and one or two story detached homes alike. Vaughn Road's intersection with Oakwood Avenue and Belvedere Avenue is nicknamed Five Points and is somewhat interesting because, you know, it has five points. There's also a neat metal tree on an island right here, which looks a bit like a palm tree with severe frostbite. Kind of. Otherwise, Parks in Oakwood Village, which haven't received a mention thus far, include Laughlin Park, Cy Townsend Park, Senator Peter Boza Parkette, Roseneath Park, Graham Park, Santa Chiara Parkette, and Charles Burton Park. Schools in the neighborhood consist of the R.C. McGee Catholic School, Rawlinson Community School, Fairbank Public School, Vaughn Road Academy, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Clair Catholic Elementary School, J.R. Wilcox Community School, St. Alphonsus Catholic School, Beth Shalom Synagogue, Canada School of Theology, and Lycée Francais de Toronto, which is a distinct bilingual private school modeling the education curriculum from France. Well then, that more or less wraps up Oakwood Village. In conclusion, from pretty homes along cozy streets, to unconventional intersections, to many eclectic stores interspersed among narrow houses, convenient streetcar lines, and, sadly, neighboring shops that fall on hard times, Oakwood Village, located on the western edge of Midtown Toronto, is an area of diversity and contrast. A middle ground in between the wealth not far to the east and the working class areas that lie just west. It is a place where the city's prosperity is rubbing off and the future is being built, although not without consequences. <laughs>